Almighty and wise God, it is another day's journey, and we pause to say thank you. God, we thank you today for you looking beyond our faults, and you continue to meet our needs. So as we gather here, virtually, Lord, from all parts of the nation, in this Lenten season, this time of self-examination, Lord, we ask that you will please open our hearts, our minds, and our ears that we may hear what you're speaking to us, O oh God, and that we may feel a special touch. Yes, God, grant us a greater understanding of what you're instructing us to do. Then, God, we ask that you will please teach us, O oh Lord, the ways of thy statutes. And we shall keep them until the end. Give us understanding and we will keep thy law. Yes, we will observe them with our whole heart. God, this is our prayer. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And it comes from the King James Version. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live, and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee, and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart, that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks and of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines, and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten, and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. 
Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God, in not keeping his commandments, and his judgments, and his statutes, which I command thee this day. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Greetings, my sisters and brothers. March 27, 2022. The resolve to remember. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 11. Humility can be thought of as a weakness in today's society. Why do people forget the road they travel in life and who help them in their accomplishments? Deuteronomy extols humility as liberating and explains its purpose. Uh, the goal is for the lesson to understand what humility is in the light of God's commandments, to appreciate God's blessings and our need for humility before the Lord, to practice living a life of humility. God's work of building humility in Israel during the wilderness wanderings is depicted as we look in, Act, in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, beginning in the first verse and the second verse. God humbled and tested Israel. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, uh, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep the Lord's commandments or not. God called Israel to a complete obedience. This obedience was to be based on remembering what the Lord had done among them in the wilderness. To be humble you. God humbled Israel. He, God brought them to a place where all they could do was to depend on God. They had nothing else and no one else to count on. So some think that God's work of humbling is accomplished just by bringing us into a humble place. But it is where our heart is while we are in the humble place that God is really concerned about it. About. Let me say that again. It is not necessarily that God brings us to a humble place, but it is where our heart is uh, when we are in a humble place that God is really concerned about. We may be in a humble place, but longing for something different, in other words, that we are not humble at all. We're just in this place, but we're looking for something greater. That's not humility. We may believe that God owes something different to us. Why have you put me in this situation? That's not humility. And we will soon get it. Instead, God wants us to be content in the humble place God places us. God tested Israel. It was not because God didn't know their hearts, but because they didn't know their hearts. Uh, we have to constantly be corrected of our overestimation of ourselves. Continuously, this must take place. God's education of Israel in the wilderness. So God humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that God may make you know that God shall, that people shall not live by bread alone, but people live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that as a person chastens one's son, so the Lord your God chastens you. So God humbled you. All of God's education begins here. Some never ever make it past the first essential step. If we are not humble and not teachable, there is then no point to the rest of any of God's uh, education. We have to be humble and to have the resolve to remember. Allowed you to hunger and fed you manna. The next grade of God's education is total dependence on the Lord 
Israel had to rely on God beyond their own knowledge, which you did not know, and beyond their own ability. This is humility. This is being tested by God, is that when we have to rely on God beyond our own knowledge and beyond our own ability, that God may make you know that people shall not live by bread alone. In the negative, this was the lesson God wanted them to learn. Uh, but in the positive, they had to learn that people live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Sadly, many still live by bread alone, living only for material things, for what can be bought or sold or earned or possessed materially. This statement is a command, but it's also a simple statement of fact. People shall not live by bread alone. As I was reading this, and it, it dawned upon me as we're in this context we're in right now, we might be saying replacing bread with gas, saline, because gas is so high. You may exist by material thing alone, but you will not live. You may exist by material things, but you will not live. Anyone thinking they live for bread alone is actually one of the living dead. Some don't live by God's word because they, they fight with God's word. The worst implement with which you can knock a person down is the Bible. It is intended for us to live upon, not to be a weapon, not to be a, a controversy, not to be a sword, but our daily food upon which we rejoice to live. We live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, not by every feeling we experience. You have never received spiritual life by your own feelings. It was when you believed God's word that you lived. And you will never get an increase of spiritual life and grow in grace by your own feelings or your own doings. It must still be by your believing the promises and the feeding on the word. It is the word of God that is our food and substance and not our own dreams or our own imaginations. If you are more excited about some dream or some vision that you are be about than you are about God's word, then something is wrong. The prophets who have a dream, who have a dream, let them tell a dream, and they who have my word, let them speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat, says the Lord? Jeremiah 23, 28. We live by every word in places where they cut diamonds, they sweep up the dust because the very dust of diamonds is valuable. And in the word of God, all of the truth is so precious that the very tiniest truth, if there be such a thing, is still diamond dust and is unspeakably precious. Find life in every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Oh, keep to the word, my sisters and brothers, Keep to it as God's word and it's upon coming out of God's mouth. Suck it down into your soul. You cannot have too much of God's word. Feed on it day and night. For thus will make God make you to live the life that is life indeed. Blessings in the hand for Israel. In these verses 6 through 10, Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in God's ways and to fear God. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you, can, you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, out of whose hills you can dig sopper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord, your God, for the good land which the Lord has given you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God. If Israel were to put their focus on every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord, then the Lord would take care 
of all the material things and bring them into materially abundant land. God is not against material things except when they come between God and us. God wanted, God wanted to materially bless a spiritually obedient Israel. The reference to iron and copper in the hills of the remarkably exact ancient copper finds and smelters all have discovered in recent years in the Arabah below the Dead Sea, and geological survey has demonstrated the presence of ores of copper and iron in the nearby hills. Then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which the Lord has given you. This is the simple principle of Matthew 6.33. But first seek the kingdom of God and God's righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping the Lord's commandments. When everything is fine and our lives are filled with abundance, it's not hard to have our hearts lifted up. We can easily forget the Lord and forget it was our, the Lord's work on our, behind, on our behalf. We must have the resolve to remember. We must be humble enough to know that all of these blessings, whatever they are, they come from God. And we have to have to resolve to remember. That's our lesson for this week. I, I commend to you the, the challenges on the next slide. Blessings, my sisters and brothers, on this last Sunday of March and the last Sunday of this unit. Blessings and may God keep you. Let me tell the story about a woman with an issue. Had it 12 long years, didn't know what to do. She heard about a man coming through her time. She fell to her knees and crawled on the ground. What she said, yo. She said, if I could only touch, but the give of his garment, I'ma give it all I have.